Hi, I'm Rajiv, and I'm a calligrapher. Most of my work is actually done with chalk. I do menus at a lot of restaurants and cafes all over the city, but here in my home, I found a way to use chalkboard paint and chalk to create something that's really unique and special. You might have seen my home tour where we featured some of the architectural elements that I've drawn onto the walls. And today, I'm gonna to show you how simple it is to do the same in your space. This is chalkboard paint. Chalkboard paint is different than chalk paint. Chalk paint is a paint you put on the walls that has a chalky effect. Chalkboard paint is painted on the walls, usually black or green, but you can get it mixed in any color and it enables you to draw on the surface with chalk. You might be thinking, yeah, I've seen that before, like in kitchens or in a kid's room where there's a little panel painted in chalk. Yes, you can do that, but I am going to show you how to use chalkboard paint to create something that's actually quite sophisticated. The first thing you need to do is paint your surface. And what I would suggest doing is painting the entire door or the entire wall in chalkboard paint, not just a little panel. When you do that, you have kind of a full surface to draw on. Now, pay very close attention to these steps because they are important. You need to paint the surface two or three times. If you don't, and then you start erasing, you'll take bits of the paint off. So one coat, let it dry. Two coats, let it dry. Ideally, third coat. And then you let it dry for a minimum of two full days. The paint really needs to cure. The wonderful thing about this chalkboard paint is that it is cheap and it is water-based. So cleanup is very, very easy. I painted this door with three coats of paint. It has been curing for two days. And now we're ready for a step that most people don't do, and it is vital. The can tells you that you have to prime the surface with chalk. If you draw on this freshly painted surface with a piece of chalk, the chalk burns itself into the paint and you'll never fully be able to erase those initial lines off. So that's usually what happens with people when they use this paint. They have the intention of creating like a, a to-do list or something on a wall. They write on it, they erase it, and, and within a few days actually, it ends up looking kind of messy. The way to avoid that is by priming the surface with a stick of chalk. I like to use just white chalk or a neutral color. There's a real beauty to just the neutral tones of the white or the beige against the black wall. And this is what I do whenever I have a commission, whether it's a small menu board at a cafe or an entire room where I'm doing the ceilings and the walls. You take the broad edge of the chalk, right? And then you're gonna start at the top and you're gonna cover the surface with chalk lightly. Now that we have some chalk on there, the next step is to take a cotton cloth and rub the chalk onto the surface. I use circular motions to kind of get into all of the pores of the paint. And that's what this is doing. The chalk is seeping in to the surface. The great thing about this paint is you don't have to worry about it being put on evenly or smoothly. If there's a bit of texture to it, it actually adds to the effect. It gives you something that's a little pebbly, and I like that. So don't be fussy about painting the wall. This is a dusty job. And you can really see that the black is disappearing. That might scare you. You might think, oh, but I really liked how it looked. I like the contrast of the black and what that's gonna look like against the chalk. Don't worry, it looks like this now, but you'll see how the contrast comes back as we start working on the wall. Okay, next step. This is your best friend when it comes to chalk work on a wall, a yardstick. It has some thickness to it. It has some girth. So when I put it against the wall, you see how I can hold on to it? That's really important. So the very first thing I always do with any wall, whether it's 18 inches wide or 30 feet long, is I find the center point, 24 inches. So I'm gonna mark 
12, 12, 12. And I'm gonna make a really light line going all the way down the middle, okay? Now, from the center point, you can work your way out. We can create a border around this. We can create a central motif. My suggestion for walls and doors is to draw things on them that are architectural, paneling or molding, or even just like a little recess. It's amazing what simple lines can do to something that's just a boring old flat closet door. And I use various yardsticks when I'm doing a project because this one, if I want a thinner border, I'll use this. It makes it really easy. Sometimes I use um, a wooden T-square too. So first, I'm gonna use the width of the yardstick to mark a simple line along all the edges. Let's end at that handle over there. So now I'm going to mark off the corners for a little decorative element. So I'm gonna measure three inches in from every corner. I'm gonna mark off these three inch increments with the tape measure. Makes it easy. Three inches, three inches. And now we're gonna create quarter circles that makes that line meet that line. Okay, now we're gonna erase out these bits. Okay, and you have a little panel. So you can freehand this from this point, or you can continue to use your yardstick. But I'm gonna freehand this. I'm gonna go over the lines with the thick side of the chalk and make this thicker. Now the interesting thing about using chalk is as you use it, the edge is going to wear away. A pointed edge, as you use it, is going to become flat. And you can use that to your advantage. As the chalk is wearing away and becoming either pointed or flat, you can twist it. So if you want a broad stroke, you use the flat edge. If you want a sharp line, you use a pointed edge. By knowing this, you can twist the chalk to achieve both. So, I'm gonna take my broad edge and I'm gonna go over my panel, the whole thing. That's the hard part, measuring it out, putting in the initial shape carefully. So I'm gonna put a narrower line on the inside of this. Watch how much this changes. And then let's mark off, oh, let's see, two inches from the end. And I'm gonna do another broad line. One more narrow line on the inside. There. And we have a very simple panel. Now, if you want to do something fun, you can add some shading with just your finger or the rag. I'm gonna go in here. I'm sort of fading it to the inside. See what a difference it makes? And it adds some contrast. So, you can see how simple and easy it is to take a boring old flat closet door and add some depth to it with just a little bit of chalkboard paint and a stick of chalk. If you wanna try something a little more ornate, um, you can find these wonderful reference books that have prints of design elements from centuries ago. And I use these all the time, looking from the page up at the space, and then I pick something that I feel will work. So let's try doing something fancy on this door.
So what do you think? Would you try this at home? Please let me know in a comment below. And if you liked this video, subscribe for more just like this one.